This must be Long Dao's dust. The ingredient Videl's Omega Elixir recipe calls for. I can't believe you actually found it. We have to go tell Videl. Maybe he's been able to translate the rest of the list. Yeah. Wow! Is that Long Dao's dust? That's one of the Omega Elixir ingredients! You found it! You were- Yeah! It's proof your research is right! Thanks! I've just managed to translate the description of the second ingredient. Here, take this and- Oh. What's wrong? Your face is red. Hey, you're burning up. It's fine. I'm pretty much always running a fever. That makes it even worse. We need to get you home so you can rest up. But I'm still translating the recipe. You heard me. All right. She's scary. Is she your sister or something, Laffy said? Well, it's kind of a long story. Oh, okay. Well, you seem to have a pretty complicated life. Do you think he's always that sick? Wouldn't surprise me. I was weak when I was a kid, too. He's probably been like this since he was born. That must be why his parents named him Videl. It means to live. Huh. I never thought about that. Luffy said is like that too. It means one who lives. One who lives. And he wants to be an explorer when he grows up. I feel sorry for him. But if he drinks the Omega Elixir, I think he can get better. When he sets off on his adventures, will you let him aboard the Von Eltia, Aizen? I suppose I could cut him a deal. You'd charge him? <laughs> I'm a pirate kid. Comes with the territory. But I promise you, I won't charge him too much. <laughs> I suppose that'll have to do. One who lives. I did not know that Lafayette's name had meaning behind it. <laughs> Didn't mean much in the end. I poured my soul into getting him through, but he's still dead all the same. Hope. <laughs> what a waste. You really think it was pointless? What else am I supposed to think? It won't bring him back. Is that a fighting arena of some sort? I don't see any demons around. Look! There's something spewing out of the middle! I sense a really malicious force emanating from it. It's probably the vengeful spirits of those who fought and died here looking for glory! Thanks for that. Now I've got goosebumps. Let's try not to wind up as more vengeful spirits. It's too bad that wasn't the real I freed. But I'm glad everyone on the ship is feeling better. Yeah. Though it sounds like they never want to touch that Salatoma stuff ever again. <laughs> what about Eleanor? She took it too. And her face went all... Wah! I don't mean how she looked. I mean how she actually feels. Oh. Well, she looks like she feels better too. Good. You're worried about her, aren't you, Velvet? No, it's nothing like that. Let me tell you something, kiddo. When young maidens ripen, they have trouble expressing their feelings. So Velvet's... ripen? Mogilu! Quit giving Loppy set confusing thoughts! <laughs> no trouble expressing those feelings, I see. is supposed to exist to bring peace and order to the world. Everything the Abbey does, everything Lord Melchior and Shepherd Artorias do, it ought to be rooted in that mission. And yet, something just doesn't feel right here. You are dismissed. That knowledge is not for you. Uh, uh... Something wrong? Whoa! Easy there. Just asking. S sorry I was just deep in thought. Is there something you need from me? Nah. Just heard a bunch of sighs and wondered if you were feeling sick or anything. No, I drank my Solitoma juice. 
Ah, tasted like crap, didn't it? It... it wasn't that bad. Hey. What? Are you afraid of demons? No, I, I am not. It's more like I... despise them. Ten years ago, a group of them attacked my village. They destroyed everything. And everyone. Including your family? Yes. The only family I had at that point was my mother. And in all the chaos, she... <sighs> all I have left of her is this hand mirror she gave me. I didn't want anyone else to have to feel the way I did. And so, I became an exorcist in order to destroy demons. So you can keep your pity. Gotcha. I will then. called a pangyon, a type of bird native to this area. Pangyon. Their meat is succulent and tender, and makes a lovely stew. Wow, what's it taste like? You'd eat that poor thing? Savage. You're one to talk, demon. It was one of my mother's specialties. All right, enough of the chit-chat. Magilu, what's this grimoire friend of yours like? Hmm, well, how do I put it? <sighs> oh... You know, like that. Like what? Oh, <sighs> well, to put it in a way those of meager imagination can understand. Grim's got a sort of listless, aristocratic air about her. A noble woman in her twilight, you could say. Huh. So you mean, like, a woman, but different from Velvet and Eleanor. <laughs> You're not wrong there. I tell you what, just keep an eye out for a grown woman. A uh, grown woman. Okay, I got it. Well, since we got her name, we could start by asking around. Exactly. Now you're talking. <sighs> What's up, kiddo? Moggy Lou, you're a grown woman yourself. So why is it you have trouble clearly expressing your real feelings? Good question. Put simply, a long time ago, mine broke. Bagal! Chaploom! Bye bye! Your feelings broke? Come on. Let's question the townsfolk. So, how do you like our island? Nice and laid back, right? It's quite a bit different from Logris. This place was even more relaxed before the opening. But recently, a lot of our young folk have gone starry eyed about the city and left us in the lurch. It's still better than it was when the demons first started showing up. We have the Abbey to thank for that. And because people are traveling more now, the need for ships has skyrocketed. Our lumber industry is booming. In other words, when the money started flowing, people let it go to their heads? That and those exorcists and soldiers from the bigger cities, they really seemed sophisticated. People from the other islands wear different clothes and have things we don't, you know? Getting worked up and worked over by what's trendy. Is that foolishness not the very definition of youth? If this keeps up, our island's traditions will fade away. That's what worries me. I understand how you feel, but you have to give young people the freedom to be themselves. It's become common practice to use South Gan lumber for shipbuilding, but there's a reason. Our trees really are the best for it. Natan trees only grow in South Gand. Their wood is light, tough, and doesn't rot. 
perfect for shipbuilding. You know your stuff. Long ago, before people knew how to build seafaring vessels, Midgan and Southgan were separate countries. Then our ancestors fashioned rafts out of Natan logs and floated all the way to Midgan. A Midgan craftsman, amazed to see a humble raft cross the open sea, returned with our ancestors here to Southgan. He had used the Natan logs to build a large, sturdy ship. Thanks to him, commerce took off between Midgan and Southgan, and the age of exploration began. The excitement of a new age had everyone floating on air, but within mere decades, Midgan declared war on Southgand. Ironically enough, it was ships made from trees from their islands that enemies used to invade them. The fighting continued for a long time, but in the end, Midgand emerged the victor. Our islands were occupied. As hard as things were, our ancestors still liked to joke about it. They'd say, age of exploration, more like age of exploitation. <laughs> When things were that bad, they could still joke about it? South Ganders have always been a cheerful bunch. We tend to look for the silver lining in every cloud. It may not seem like it these days, but... South Gan used to be a place where the laughter would never cease. Some people even used to call it Shenanigand. Shenanigand? This must have been a really fun place. Still no leads on that grimoire lady. Mogulu. When did you get that letter from her you mentioned? Hmm, hard to say. It must have been last year? A decade ago? Take this seriously or I'll feed you to the sharks. Oh, what? I think I'd at least rate a Kraken. Keep this up and I swear I'll eat. It's them. The final preparations are complete. Once you've assumed your new post, Everyone will act on your command. Thank you, sister. But to be honest, I worry that these shoes I'm filling might just be a bit too big for me. You need not worry. You possess a special strength and quality that others lack. Shepherd Artorius has high hopes for your deployment to Polymedes. Fear not. Just be yourself and you'll do fine. Believe you're a leader, and you will be. Yes. Try to make you proud, sister. They're sending him to Palamedes? Is that the name of a facility on this island? I had better get going. Safe travels. Oh, one more thing. Be careful around the demon and Haria. It's stronger than it looks. We've even had some casualties. Understood. Also, if you must drink the water, remember to boil it. Sister... <laughs> I know, I know, I worry too much. But I just can't help myself. So, there's a demon in Haria. It sounds like it's a pretty feisty one, too. If so, it may prove useful. Still, what magical timing for Oscar to show up here at the very same hour we do! <sighs> I understand your suspicion of me, but have you any proof? None, it's true. But as an exorcist, you're certainly sympathetic to the Abbey's cause. And soon you may wish we were sympathetic. Eleanor hasn't been snitching on us. I'm sure of it. And how would you know? Are you watching her even when she's taking a bath? Huh? <laughs> no, I don't. I... I always stay outside when she's taking a bath, and... Then isn't it possible she's communicating with the Abbey in secret while you're not there? You pledged to obey me until the day you die, correct? Yes, that I did. Remember, when you two trade blows, only the Abbey wins. One less demon? one less traitor for them to worry about. 
While we're standing around here arguing, that demon could be attacking Grimoire! <sighs> it's true. Let's find some more people to question around town. So what's it really like? Huh? The connection between Moloch and Vessel. Do you share, like, thoughts and feelings? Um... Sort of. When I'm dwelling inside Eleanor, I can see what she sees and hear what she hears. But I can't read her thoughts or her emotions. Sitting in a box doesn't teach you how the box feels. I see. In that case... I want to give her as little time alone as possible. Uh, I don't want to bathe with her, all right? I know. You're a boy and all. For her baths, we can send Bienfu. No, that's a bad idea. It'll have to be Mogulu. Or myself. Phew! What sort of boundaries have you and Eleanor drawn? How do you sleep? We talk before bed sometimes. But it's not like I'm sleeping by her side or anything. It's easier for me to tell when she wakes up if I'm dwelling inside her. Does she ever get out of bed at night? Not in my experience. And she sleeps so peacefully. Huh? When she's around you guys, she always looks so stern. But when she's sleeping, her expression is... softer, you could say. She lets her hair down, too. And I think it's kind of prettier that way. Huh. So that's what he likes. Well, keep an eye on her, but... But? Watch out for the older girls. Huh? Teresa and Oscar sure seem close. I've known them since I was an initiate, but I've never seen them quarrel, not even once. Did you ever fight with your brother, Velvet? Yeah, I guess I did. Sometimes I'd chew him out, and he'd sulk and stop talking to me, but I found that adorable, too. You did? No matter how much he dug in his heels, or tried to talk like he was in charge, after a while, he'd be right there trailing along behind me. Like a little puppy dog. Puppies are a lot more obedient. I always had to keep an eye on him. Little brothers are odd creatures. Rokuro's a little brother. Is he adorable, too? <gasps> I don't think a little brother who's out to kill you is in any way adorable. But Shigure seemed like he was having fun. Sometimes you just don't make sense. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> little brothers. Do you have any siblings? I'm an only child. Well then, that's perfect. You pretend the boy is your little brother. Huh? That's a bit extreme, but actually... When I'm talking with Lafayette, sometimes I think, this is what having a brother must feel like. I could be Eleanor's brother. Don't take any of this nonsense seriously, Lafayette. Malakim are just tools to exorcists. She can never think of you as her brother. Oh, yeah. You're wrong. I've changed how I view Malakim. I know that's true because I can think of him as a brother. Right. She's all talk. Don't believe her. It seems to me like you're the one who's treating him as a tool, by forcing your own opinions upon him. Ooh, two sisters struggling for the affections of their brother. Eeny teeny candlestick, which one will the Muppet pick? How about an older brother instead? Hey, this doll? It looks like Bienfu. Ah, a keen eye you have, young man. That is a doll of the Empyrean Amenoch. That's... Empyrean Amenoch? Yep, no doubt about it. I've seen her with my own eyes. Real dignified, but not without a bit of a temper. You saw her? Why was she angry? Well, the Abbeys banned any profession of the Amenochian faith in Southgand, despite her popularity. Gotta assume that's what got her all bent out of shape. I tried talking to her, but no matter what I said, she was just like... <sighs> <sighs> oh. Wait, that sounds like... 
And that low-energy goddess you saw? The doll you've got here looks like her? Yeah, more or less. Ha! Fortune smiles upon thee, weary adventurers. That listless goddess is none other than Grim. Grimoire isn't human? When did I ever say she was? So, shopkeep, where'd you see her? I think it was down by McClear Beach. Pensively watching the tide come in? That's her, all right. Quickly, to the beach! Ugh. Why didn't you mention Grimoire as a Moloch before now? You can't be too careful with that information. Spies, spies listening everywhere! <laughs> the people of Southgand originally worshipped Amanuch, the Empyrean of Water. The lives of the people of the Southern Isles are inherently tied to the sea. Whether it was gratitude for a good catch or an appeal for protection, everyone offered their prayers to Amenoch. But the Abbey worships in Nominoch, don't they? Do the people still keep their faith? Most of the people obey the will of the Abbey, but one small village deep in Southgand is a special case. The village is called Haria, and even now they keep their faith in Amenoch. They've even quarreled with the Abbey. I'm grateful that they fight off the demons. I really am. But do they have to dictate which gods we worship to? They think they do. It's their truth. Then again, they can't control what's in your heart, can they? What does it mean to become an adult? <laughs> the eternal question of youth. Have you ever heard of the ceremony of adulthood? It's a yearly tradition on this island. If I remember right, it's totally wild. Everyone throws bananas and porringes at each other. Traditionally, yes, but things have changed over the years. Bananas and porringes are a thing of the past. People are always reaching for bigger and better things, right? In this case, it's watermelons. Whole watermelons. You're throwing watermelons? That's gotta hurt. Trust me, I know. But watermelons are the least of our worries. Recently, people have started flinging coconuts. Coconuts? Those things are as hard as rocks! Trust me, I know. Like getting hit with a brick. Now, every year, there are some kids who never make it to adulthood. You don't mean they... Yeah, I've kept putting it off myself, but it looks like this year, I've got no choice but to participate. That's crazy! It's far too dangerous! And more importantly, how does it make someone an adult? There are ancient traditions that say overcoming danger marks a child's coming of age. Some people still cling to the old ways. You've hit the nail on the head. There are lots of old folks that sit around complaining how weak as darn kids are. The hypocrites. Back then, they used bananas and watermelons. They even cracked the watermelons ahead of time. I don't think cracking a coconut would help much either. So that's why you're standing about looking blue. I'm so ashamed of myself for being scared. If you don't want to do the ceremony, why not just skip it? I'd love to, but I don't really have a choice. I wouldn't be able to show my face around here if I chickened out. Having the courage to say no to something you don't feel is right. Isn't that the true mark of an adult? Wait! You're right! <laughs> now I can finally become an adult! Oh yeah! Look how grown up I am! <laughs> and getting carried away with yourself and acting the fool is the true mark of immaturity. Sorry, you're right. This grimoire who we're searching for is a Moloch like Bienfu, right? To be honest, I don't see how someone so different can be a Moloch just the same as Lafi said or Aizen. I understand your doubts. It's quite the tangly mess. I'll tell you anything! In that case, I've been wondering, what's underneath your hat? Oh no! Anything but that! So, we've hit a wall already. But that ribbon flaps around and gets in the way, right? Could I take it off for you? No! No! That's not possible! You mustn't remove the ribbon! Why not? That's another thing I can't say! It's all cans with you. All right, is there anything you can tell me? I could talk about what type of Malakim we are, or our position in the world of Malakim, or our abilities. Oh! I'd like to know all that. Then I will tell you. Listen closely. We Norman are a well-established race of Malakim. Compared to other Malakim, we aren't as adept at manipulating natural forces. 
but we excel at drawing out and heightening the abilities of others. Think of them as a convenient power-up. They're also known as common spirits. Don't even say that! We Norman hate being called that! Why is it so painful for you? Because it makes people think we're average and unremarkable! That's why we work so hard to show how we're all different! That does explain your quirky speaking mannerisms. Don't sweat it. That's a perfectly common thing to worry about. <laughs> Don't say that! What are those penguins doing? Probably keeping their eggs warm? Most likely. They look like a mama and a papa. Penguins are monogamous, faithful creatures. They never leave their mate. <sighs> Isn't that romantic? So they lay eggs because they're like husband and wife. But... How do they make the eggs? Huh? That's... well... So, Laffy said, here's an interesting fact. A single penguin egg actually contains dozens of smaller orange eggs. Oh, so their eggs must be small and crunchy. Yep, they have the texture of caviar and the rich flavor of sea urchins. Interesting. So they're more like fish than birds. So you've eaten them. How cruel. Look how much they care about their young. While it may be a bit cruel, they taste amazing. They're considered a delicacy in some circles. Top a bowl of rice with these crunchy eggs and some rich penguin thigh meat, and you get a dish called Family Fricassee. That's a horrific name. I wasn't the one who named it, okay? Those eggs look tasty, but I think I'll pass. Is that... Grimoire? <sighs> She's moving away!